Hi, everyone. My name is Mariana. I'm a director of Wednesday Meetings, and uh, we are excited to have Con Resnik with us today. Uh, my co-director, Ala, is going to make an announcement first. Hi, my name is Ala. I'm a Wednesday Meeting Director, and here is the announcement. Uh, don't forget to fill out your apparel form if you send out via newsletter. Due date is this Sunday, March 14th at midnight. If you have missed any of our meetings and would like to watch them, check out our YouTube page. You will find them there along with the Spring Semesters podcast. Uh, not that you need a reminder, but next week is a spring break. So everyone, please recharge, try to disconnect during this time and be safe. Uh, we will hand it over to Emily, who will present on developing leadership skills. Thank you. All right. I oh, so I'm trying to share my screen, but it says host disabled participant screen sharing. It should be fine right now. Can you try right now? Okay. Yep. It works now. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me share my screen. All right. Um, I think it's working now. So. Um, you know, first off, I just wanted to say thank you guys for being here. Um, I always love, you know, being able to present and, um, you know, spend my time with CSUN students. So um, thank you guys for having me today. Um, I know you guys are all so busy with just midterms, recruiting, and, you know, just living life through a computer screen. So I, I know how hard and um, how taxing that could be. So I definitely want to make the most out of this hour. Um, so you guys don't feel like you guys are, you know, it's just like another typical session. So I want to make this as interactive as possible, make the most out of your guys' time. Um, so I, you know, with that being said, I would also love to see your guys' faces. Um, so if you guys can turn on your camera, I think it just, it adds that human element as well. Um, so I would appreciate it if you guys had your cameras on just so that way I can see your guys' faces as, um, you know, as I present. And it's okay if you guys just woke up, you guys feel like you don't look that great. It's fine. We get it. It's, you know, this is the times we're living in. So no judgment. I just want to see you guys. Um, but, you know, with that being said, I am going to be presenting today on leadership. Um, and, you know, really with that, I want to have like an engaging discussion. So, um, you know, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to um, either unmute yourself or, you know, write in the chat box. I want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, so thank you guys. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so just to take a backtrack to introduce my Myself. Uh, my name is Emily Trin, and I am the campus recruiter at Cone Resnick. Um, I cover all of our California offices, including Los Angeles, Woodland Hills, San Diego, and Sacramento. Um, and then also, I've been here for about five years now, a little over five years. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, I would love to get to know a little bit about you guys as well. So if you guys can write in the chat box, um, I'm just curious if you guys, if this session was actually a talent show instead, what would your guys' hidden talent be? Or what would your guys' talent be? I'm curious to know. I would love to know a little bit more about the audience. So if you guys want to drop in the chat, I would love to see your guys' responses. Sleeping. Okay, that is very valid. Very, very valid. Um, so, you know, actually, I think this Friday is um, a national napping day. So Jennifer, I think that would be the day that you would thrive. <laughs> All right, technology, singing, singing, listening, powerlifting, walking, um, gaming, chess. Okay, sounds great. Well, for all of the singers, um, you know, this was actually, that question was a trick question. So I do expect all the people that said that they would say, or that would be singers um, to sing a part of this session. So cooking hot dogs, that is very interesting. And Omar, I would love to hear more about that. 
um, not to put you on the spot. Have you ever been a part of a hot dog eating contest or any of that sort? What, can you elaborate a little bit more on this? I think you're on mute. Um, no, I haven't. I just really enjoy cooking them. I've never participated in a competition like that or anything, but I'd love to someday. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Well, we'll hold you to it. Once we're all back on campus, you'll have to cook hot dogs for all of us. <laughs> all right, sounds um, good. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys for chatting that in. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so today, as um, you know, as they mentioned, I will be discussing leadership and how to develop those skills. Um, so just to start off, I'm sure you guys have heard about leadership within your classes. You guys have heard it, um, you know, within presentations. And so there's, it's such a broad term. It's such a broad, there's such a broad definition to leadership. And so, you know, the purpose of this session, I wanted to break it down, um, at least just like from an organization standpoint, what leadership looks like when you guys, as you guys are going through the recruiting process to become interns, to become entry-level associates, it's very important to keep in mind um, what traits and attributes are important of a leader. And throughout the progression of your career, you are going to be playing many different leadership roles, right? So for example, right now being in school, you know, you have leadership positions to be a part of accounting association, BAP, um, as you progress on within your career as an intern or an entry level, you know, some of the, the attributes and some of like the roles that you'll be playing as leaders will be changing. So that's something I want you guys to keep in mind. Um, leadership, you know, when I was going through school and I heard that, that buzzword, it's like, I hear it all the time, but like, you know, it's, it's so broad. So I wanted to just dive in a little bit deeper on, um, you know, what cone or what leadership looks like from a cone resident competence competency model. So I'm not going to go through all of this. These are a couple things, um, you know, that I have listed out here. Um, so when you guys think about a workplace, so I have a question for you guys. When you guys think about a workplace, what kind of leaders do you guys want to see? So it's a two part question. What kind of leaders do you want to see within like, you know, the organization and what type of leader do you personally want to be? So if I can get a brave volunteer to um, answer one of those, both of those, whatever that is, um, that would be great. So any brave volunteers, you guys can also chat too, but. Um, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of servant leadership, mm -hmm. so I don't know how that would work in a firm <laughs> or if that would work in a firm, but I really, I really appreciate servant leadership. And so Sarah, can you elaborate a little bit? What do you mean by servant um, leadership? Um, a servant leader would be someone who not only tells other people what to do, but also volunteers themselves to the team that's under them. So they don't right. see themselves as being ordering other people around and not contributing themselves. They are right in there with everybody else, you know, hands on. Yes. And I can say from a public accounting standpoint, that is extremely important too. the type of what you just said, um, you know, that type of leader is leading by example, right? Um, they are the ones that, you know, are it's like are also being a part of what they're suggesting to do. So um, thank you, Sarah, for sharing that. Um, I see in the um, chat, I see supportive. Yes, exactly. Um, so one thing that I want to point out on here. Um, so we have lead by example, inspires and motivates individuals, um, groups to achieve results. This is extremely important as you guys go through the recruiting process as well. Um, you know, you think about certain traits when you when you um, are recruiting and what's important. Culture is always important. You know, um, training, growth advancement, that's all important, but also the leadership. So it's very important for you guys to be able to gauge the type of leadership and what kind of leadership you guys want to see. It's very important. Um, the reason why I asked you guys these questions is because 
I want you guys to start thinking about what's important to you, what drives you, because leadership is, you know, it's, it comes from the top. Leadership has a vision and it trickles down to everyone within that organization. So um, it's important to identify those things as you guys are going through the recruiting process. So that way your questions um, and when you're making decisions, it will be much easier when you have an idea of what type of leadership you want to see. Um, and so I see in the chat box, I see approachable. Yes, that's absolutely a huge, huge thing, a part of leadership. You want to, to feel comfortable to be able to go, um, you know, open door policy. Um, so again, these are just a couple that I have. I'm not going to go through the whole list because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to just read off of these, but just reading off of these, these are just a couple things to keep in mind that at least from an organization standpoint and from Cone Resnick standpoint, these are what we identify as leadership, um, you know, recognizes others for their efforts and gives credits where credit is due. Um, I know recognition is something within a workplace that, you know, sometimes it can drive people to, to feel empowered, to feel motivated, to continue working. I can tell you public accounting at times, it can be very challenging, but it's also very rewarding when you have the right people surrounding you to, you know, to embrace, like, to be able to push you forward and recognize you for your efforts. So um, that's something that's very important within a you know, within like an industry like public accounting where it's so fast paced. Um, and then also demonstrating initiative and is proactive when dealing with clients, colleagues and workload as well. All right, so my next slide, I have key attributes of a leader. So, oh, actually, let me scroll back. All right, so there you go. So key attributes of a leader. So here are a couple things, there's accountable, balanced, approachable, as Mariana, you had mentioned, team oriented. So these are a couple um, attributes um, of what you want to see in a leader. Um, I have some continued ones here too, firm minded, growth minded, and an educator. So I want to put this back on you guys. So of these four right here, when you're looking at a, like a, a type of organization you want to work for, a type of leader you want to work for, which of these four resonates most with you guys? And you guys can put it in the chat as well. All right, so approachable, yep, educator. Yes, so, you know, of these, um, you know, within public accounting, it is, so Christopher, you had mentioned educator, which you saw on this slide right here, absolutely important, especially someone starting off their career as an intern or, you know, an entry level associate, it's important to see um, you know, to have someone that is encouraging you to continuously learn, pushing you to, to grow your knowledge and to grow and to build that foundation for you. So yes, that is extremely important. Anyone else? Well, I think recognizing others for their efforts is also a very important one, especially when people just start and when they don't know what to do, whenever they do something, it's really important to actually have that feedback. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and then in the chat, I see caring. Yes, that's extremely important too. Um, so one thing that I want to keep um, to, to bring up to you guys is, you know, with all of these different attributes within a leader, these are the things that we see within a workplace. And these are the things that you guys can expect um, within some of the, with some of the leaders that you guys meet at throughout the course of your career. And so again, it's very important that you guys are identifying what's important to you. So Christopher, as you mentioned, of those of you know that some of the key um, attributes you had listed out um, an educator. And so I can tell you just reading off of you know these, I when I was going through the recruiting process and starting off my career, I would have chose an educator too, because for someone that is about to embark in their career and 
you know, is still in the learning process, you need to have someone, it's, it, it aligns with like your values, right? It's important to you to be able to get um, that training to get that type of like motivation. So yes, and I can tell you too, as time progresses, it will change. So, you know, down the line, um, let's say you're like five, 10 years in, maybe you're, you're, um, maybe the attributes that you would like to see in a leader changes and maybe it might be something towards like firm minded or growth minded um, because as you advance within your career, your values change. Um, so it's always important um, to always do like a self-assessment throughout the progression of your career and identify what's important to you. So that way you guys can sustain that happiness and, and like, and, um, gravitate towards those types of leaders that embodies the characteristics and traits that are important to you. So thank you guys for answering that. Um, and then moving forward, so qualities of genuine leadership. So again, I'm putting it back on you guys. So, you know, of these five, skilled, visionary, inventive, collaborative, mindful, what is most important to you guys when you guys think about overall, like not just a leader, but just overall leadership? Um, what do you guys want to see as you guys are moving on to your career? Like what is important to you guys of these five? Um, Emily, sorry, I don't know if it's just me, but we're still on the slide that says definition of leadership um, from oh. Resnick complete. <laughs> Are you guys able to see this, like the slide that I have up right now, does it show, does it still show that or does it say qualities of genuine leadership? It says definition oh, of leadership. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on just a second. Let me fix that. Um, okay, I was wondering if it was me uh, or I was just missing something. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, can you guys see it now? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, wow. So I completely, so you guys are, are you guys seeing it in like presentation mode? Now we can. Yes. Okay, wow. So I pretty much was asking you guys these questions and you guys are like, what is, what the heck is she referring to? Well, thank you guys, or thank you, Caroline, for, um, for sharing that. Um, now, I hopefully everyone is can see this slide, right? Skilled, visionary. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, of these qualities, what is important to you guys? Um, and you know, and if you guys can share why as well. Probably mindful. Mm -hmm. And what? And why would you choose mindful? Because. A good leader, you're lucky if they have all of these, or maybe even two of these at the same time. But if you have a group, almost certainly one of them will be a visionary, will be highly skilled. So if the leader is mindful enough to use those parts of the group to in a productive way, then it's really important. Yes, thank you, Joe. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yes, that is extremely important. Um, and, you know, just moving forward with just what the principles of genuine leadership is. So here are a couple things. Um, and I want to just provide some experiences as well. So focus on the situation, not the person. So I'm sure you guys have all been in this situation before. It takes a very skilled, mindful, thoughtful leader to be able to exhibit all of these traits. And this is something that, you know, as you progress in your career, you need to keep in mind of how are you gonna be able to, to lead by example, to lead where, you know, you are embodying some of these, um, you know, traits. So focus on the situation, not the person. Deal with situations objectively and don't take, the, don't, don't take things personally. So how many of you guys in here um, have had that situation before where, you know, you have been in a situation where you are focusing 
or trying to, you know, either find blame or focusing on the person as opposed to the situation itself. I'm pretty sure we're all guilty here. So I just want to see a raise of hands. How many of you guys have been in this position? No, you guys are all perfect. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, that is something that I can tell you within your career in public accounting, you will come across situations like this where sometimes people are having a really hard, like, sometimes people might be having a really hard day and they might be extremely busy and stressed. And sometimes it's easy as humans to react in a way where we're not focused on the situation itself, but we're you know, kind of exerting that energy onto somebody. So that is something that is extremely important within a leader um, to be able to look at things and deal with things objectively. Um, another thing is maintain the self-confidence of others. Um, maintain constructive relationships, take initiatives to make things better, lead by example, and think beyond the moment. Um, I think even as students, so many of these traits are extremely important um, to practice now. Um, so that way, you know, when you get into a workplace, um, you are able, you are able to be mindful. So, you know, going back to what you were saying, Joe, it's extremely, you know, being mindful is something that will take you a long way. Having a level of self-awareness will take you a long way in how to become a leader. Um, and so um, I will tell you, just like in the world of public accounting, um, you know, you, you guys will come across situations where, um, you might deal with people where you're just like, oh, maybe, you know, like I would have liked to see this from this person. I would have liked to see this person um, deal with the situation in this way. And so the more that you're able to assess those things that you would like to see, I think your leadership, your leadership styles will be very apparent to you in what you want to see and also what you want to be as well. So thoughts on leadership. What are some common themes? Um, what common themes pervade these views on leadership? And again, what type of leader do you guys want to be? If I'm going to bring a volunteer to, um, to answer one of these questions. Um, I would want to be like a helpful leader. Like if someone needs anything, like I, I'm there for them, like they can rely on me type of leader. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's a great one. Thank you, Brianna. That is very important. And so I guess if you guys want to think about whether it was like a job that you guys have had, a professor you guys have had, someone in your life that you saw was like a leader of some sort or was in a leadership position, can you guys tell me what traits that you admired about that person and why? I know I'm asking a lot of questions right now, but I just want to get into, you know, I want to exercise these types of ideas and just like these thoughts and get you guys thinking because, um, you know, it will be helpful in the long run um, because you are, you will be self-aware. You will be aware of what, what you want to see. The more self-aware of what it is that you want and what you want to see, you will be happier um, and sustain that happiness in whatever career you decide to choose. So that's why I'm asking you guys all these questions. So Angel, I do see your hand raised. I think the leadership trait that I admired most about someone was knowledge. When mm -hmm. they knew exactly what to do and they could answer all of the complicated questions. Yes, that is a great one. Um, I will tell you in the world of public accounting, there is so much to learn. So when you are working with someone that has that knowledge and is willing to, you know, to, to share that with you and take the time to invest in your learning, that will push you far. Um, can I have another person just think about a leader, whether that's someone in their family, um, you know, whether that's in a professional setting, a school setting, and what skills did they embody um, that you find uh, or that you admire? Well, for me, I want to say approachable. One of my professors for accounting classes, uh, was really approachable and he was always willing to stay uh, after class and uh, 
answer all the questions in a very informal, um, like in a very informal setting, I would say. And that was really helpful for us because we asked, you know, accounting questions and all kind of like CPA related questions. And I feel that, you know, that feeling of being approachable was a big uh, thing for all of the students. Yes. Yes, thank you, Mariana. Um, that is extremely important too, because if you're if you're working with someone that is not approachable, 10 out of 10 times you're not happy. 10 out of times or 10 out of 10 times it sets up, it doesn't set you up for success, right? Um, especially as a student, especially as starting off your career. Um, so that, thank you for sharing that. And it, do I have any, one more person to be able to answer that, um, that question? I think confidence is something that's important for a leader to have. Um, like you can look to them and they, they seem like they know what they're doing. It can put you at ease usually. Yes, that is, that's a great one. Um, to, to bring up, uh, you know, it, that confidence and that ability to be able to stay calm and to keep others calm as well, um, that goes a long way. So all of these things that you guys had brought up are, you know, I appreciate you guys bring that up because um, those are the types of leaders that we at Cone Resnick want to see as early on as, you know, as interns, as entry levels, the the more that you guys can be aware and exercise those skills um, inherently within your career, within your progression of your career, you kind of feed off of what you want to see. The, the energy that you want to see is like, you know, you're able to, to channel that within like the people that you interact with, how you deal with things um, and how you act within the organization. So thank you guys for sharing that. Um, and a couple more things I, I wanted to go over is just, um, so I wanted to go over le leadership and emotional intelligence. So I know that I had mentioned to you guys before that, you know, having a level of self-awareness is extremely important within the whole, in terms of like being a leader um, and leadership as well. Um, so leaders with high levels of emotional intelligence tend to be more articulate and garner enthusiasm for a shared vision. Um, so with transform transformational leaders, I'm going to go back to this slide um, just so that way I can differentiate between transformational and transactional leaders. Transformational leaders generate awareness of the mission or vision of the organization and work to develop colleagues and direct reports to higher levels of ability and potential, whereas the transactional leaders use a system of rewards and punishments in which the leader rewards or disciplines um, direct reports with regard to performance. So going back to this slide right here, those transformational um, leaders, um, some of the qualities that they exhibit, empathy, motivation, self-awareness, and self-confidence, Basically everything, all the traits that you guys had just told me right now falls under, you know, falls under the category of transformational leaders. These are the, the people that, you know, think about, um, you know, the CEOs of the company, like the office managing partners of, you know, a firm. These are the types of attributes and qualities that, you know, being in such a high position, these are the qualities that get to them or get to that point. And a huge key to, to displaying um, leadership that is like resonated, that resonates with others is emotional intelligence. You need to have a pulse on how you're coming off. Um, so that way, you know exactly how to be better and how to lead for others. Um, that is extremely important. And I want you guys to remember that is having that emotional intelligence and self-awareness, um, empathy, motivation, self-confidence. Those are everything that you had mentioned. So, um, you know, those are just like some of the qualities that do develop those like high ranking leaders. Um, and so emotional intelligence competency clusters. So again, with self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. So of these four here, 
um, you know, which one of these four do you guys think is important or most important to you um, when it comes to emotional intelligence and leadership? Maybe self-awareness, because if the leader knows what they're lacking in, they'll be able to communicate to the group what they need. Because if they lack in a certain skill set, a group member who's strong in that skill set will be empowered by the leader giving them, you know, tasks or authority a bit and then the from there uh increased confidence the leader becomes more confident from the group yes thank you joe thank you um yes self-awareness is um you know that is kind of what uh it's kind of like the underlying um it's the underlying foundation to become a leader right so you know, I do want to just take this time um, to conclude on the whole leadership. I know a lot of you guys are going through the recruiting process. Some of you guys have already gone through the recruiting process and have, um, you know, a job secured. So as you guys start your career as an intern or an entry level, some of the things that I want you guys to keep in mind is there's no time that like early on in your career that doesn't mean that you can't be a leader you can always be a leader at every step of your career of every step of your like journey I mean for a lot of you guys I know you guys are leaders within like you know some of the student organizations as well and so I as you guys are entering the workforce you know think about what kind of traits that you like to see in leaders and try to see how you can incorporate that into your own life. So I can tell you as a campus recruiter um, and overseeing our internship program, some of the leaders that like stand or some of like the interns that have like leadership um, qualities that stand out to me are the ones that are being proactive um, the ones that are, um, you know, taking charge and knowing exactly what they want within um, their internship or within their career, there's no point that, you know, you cannot display those types of characteristics to put yourself in a position where others are looking at you saying like, wow, that person is really displaying those leadership skills that, you know, I would, I would like to see as they progress. So, um, you know, try to, try to think about that and always be aware of that. Um, because I promise you, like at Cone Resnick, at any organization, the sooner that you are able to display those types of characteristics, um, you know, it's easier for those around you to be able to come up with some type of like foundation or plan um, to, to move you up the ladder. Um, so that's something that I just wanted to share with you guys that um, as interns, as entry levels, think about what's important. It's always, um, you know, being proactive, taking initiative, thinking outside the box, and also being aware of others, how you can help others around you. Um, that's all very important. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, before I go into a couple things about like the firm, because I do have some slides for you guys on that, I wanted to see if you guys had any questions at all about leadership, like, you know, any of that. I just wanted to see if you had any questions for me. No questions? You guys are all good? Well, how would um, you recommend um, us to start working on that? You know, let's say if we want to keep developing our leadership skills right now, and uh, like, what would you recommend starting with? So I'm sorry, um, I missed the first part of your question. What what did you, what was the question again? I apologize. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, if we want to start working on our leadership skills right now, let's say uh, some of us never had any experience in that, how would we approach that? Like, what would you recommend to start with? 
Yeah, so that's a great question. I think there's many different ways to approach it. It depends on what type of like leadership role. So let's say if being a student and you want to take a leadership role within a student organization, okay? So let's say that's like the example of like how you want to start. The first thing is, um, is uh, it's always having, asking yourself why, like, First off, like before you even like think about, you know, uh, making any types of assessment, think about why you want to be, why you want to take on a certain position, why you want to, you know, you know, insert yourself within a leadership role. Once you're able to answer that question and understand why, that's kind of where you open all the doors of where your resources, resources lie. So for example, if I'm a student and I want to take on a leadership role, one of the reasons why is so that way I am able to not only put it on my resume. So, you know, I know, cause I know that's like one thing that like, you know, being in leadership roles, it, it speaks for itself, right? That's like the smaller part of it, but the overall, the overarching reason um, is to be able to um, have more, like have more engagement points with my peers, um, with students, um, to be able to help and facilitate them within, you know, like teaching them more about accounting or the recruiting process. Um, and so let's say if that's like your reason why, then how you would begin is being able to reach out to those that are in the position that you want to be in um, and talking to them and saying, hey, like, you know, this is, I, I want to take on this leadership role and this is why. Um, can you tell me a little bit more of like your experiences and like lead me in the right direction of like, you know, tips and advice of how you think I can obtain this role, um, just so that way, at that point, the main goal for you to be in a leadership role is to feel like you have enough resources and knowledge and a level of self-awareness of what it takes to get to that point. So that's what I would say is reaching out to others that are, that you look up to looking like reaching out to others that are in that position to start off. Um, and then at that point, then you identify, okay, in this role, the skills that I would need to have as a leader is I need to be, um, I need to have great communication skills. I need to be, um, you know, empathetic, understanding and identify those qualities. And then at that point, that's when you do the real work and say like, okay, you know, these are the qualities I need to have. Like, what can I do? Like, what strengths do I have to be able to um, you know, to be able to like exhibit that within a leadership role. So I know that's a long-winded answer, but in the end, it's just important to really take a look at yourself and um, understand like what qualities and traits that you are also able to bring to the table. It's having that level of self-awareness. That's why it's like very important to, you know, I always tie back to self-awareness. Yes, thank you. That makes sense. So always start with yourself. That's the main point. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I have a question. Yes. So one thing that I personally struggle with whenever I'm in a leadership position or I'm working in a group is confronting someone when I don't agree with their perspective or I don't agree with the way that they did something. Um, so what do you have any advice for that? And what would you recommend um, I do in that position where while still being professional and demonstrate, demonstrating good leadership qualities? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, confrontation is never easy, whether that is in a school setting, a, like, a you know, being a having a leadership role within a student organization or even a workplace. So my biggest key to this is, again, being aware of the situation. So a lot of times why confrontation can be intimidating is because it has like ties to emotion, right? If you don't like, you know, say if like you are upset because you don't agree with something, that's one thing. But the best way to approach those situations is taking a step back and thinking it 
thinking of the situation itself objectively and understanding, okay, like this is my standpoint and this is this person's standpoint. The main thing is to try to find a middle ground. Sometimes there might not even be a middle ground, but I would say it's, you know, sitting that person down or having a conversation. It also depends on like who you're dealing with as well. Um, so let's say if this person is like very reactive and you know that about them, then as to display those qualities of like being a leader and knowing how to deal with that situation, it's being aware of that other person's like, you know, traits um, and how to work around that. So let's say if you're if you're dealing with someone that might be very like reactive um, to certain situations, then you know, maybe the approach that you want to take is, you know, saying like, hey, like, you know, I understand, like, what, like, I get where you're coming from with like your solution. I just wanted to share like my solution as well. And then let's have a discussion about it. I think if you always put it back on the other person and allow for a conversation or a discussion about it, as opposed to being like, no, this is the right answer that will always, always start, that would always put you in a position where, you know, it's easier to, to, to look at both sides as opposed to like completely shutting someone down. So what I would recommend is understanding your audience, finding ways around um, like what you think is the best way to approach the situation and then opening it for a conversation, acknowledging your side and also that person's side as well. That's a big thing when dealing with people and just like being, um, you know, it, and being like aware is acknowledging both sides, all parties. Because I think sometimes as humans, when we feel like our points or, um, like when our points are our perspective isn't being acknowledged, then that's when, you know, somebody can feel like frustrated. So acknowledgement is a huge thing. Oh, acknowledgement and awareness. Thank you so much. That makes a lot of sense. Of course. Any other questions? All right, well, I'm gonna just move forward then with a couple of slides with just um, Cone Resnick, who we are. Um, and, you know, I'll keep it short and light because I know that, um, you know, firm presentations can be long sometimes, so I'll keep it short. And if we have any questions at the end, um, please feel free to ask. So I guess before we get into that, just the campus recruiting process, a couple things. Um, so we are currently recruiting um, heavily for our summer leadership program and 2022 internship positions. Um, so just wanted to make an announcement. The deadline is March 15th, which is in five days. So make sure that you guys are applying if you guys are interested. Um, a key thing I wanted to note is we have all of our positions on Handshake. It will redirect you to the Cone Resnick Careers website. It's important to, for you guys to know that Handshake is not the end stop um, or it's not like the end of the process. You have to apply on our Cone Resnick Careers website. So just keep that in mind that if you guys are interested, you also have to apply on the Cone Resnick Careers website in order to be eligible. So um, if you guys are interested, let me know um, or just apply. But here's my email address as well in case you guys have questions. Um, and yeah, so apply on Handshake and the Cone Resnick Careers website. All right, and just a couple things about Cone Resnick. So who are we just in terms of numbers wise? So we are the 12th largest public accounting firm in the nation. Um, we are located in 25 cities across the nation as well. Um, and we also have an international reach via Nexia members in more than 100 or in 100 countries. So what our story looks like so far. Um, so, you know, our origins date back to 1919. As of 2012 is when our merger happened and we became Cone Resnick from the Resnick Group and J.H. Cone. Um, and from then, you guys can see many things have happened um, from 2012 to now 2021. Um, a couple things launching our Cone Resnick Cares, which is our social outreach um, or our social outreach initiative. 
our Women Can, which is our initiative that supports women and men as well as they progress and advance their career within public accounting. Um, and then also in 2018 was our introduction, or our introduction into the cannabis industry. So as you guys can see, that is still fairly new, three years. Um, and what that translates to is also just very exciting opportunities as well. Um, our sponsorship with the MLB program as well occurred in 2018 and then in awarded in 2021. Um, we are listed as number nine in top accounting internships in Vault's, in Vault's top 50 um, accounting internships. All right. And then my next slide. So it covers just our geographic location or geographic coverage. Um, we are very prevalent on the East Coast and expanding our um, West Coast presence. Um, so as you see, California, we have four offices, Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Diego, and Woodland Hills. And here's a breakdown of our industry expertise. Um, so you guys can see there are many, many different industries that we specialize in. Um, and in the later slides, I will be going over with LA and Woodland Hills specifically, which industries we specialize in. But here is just an overview, an overall overview of all of the industries we specialize in across the nation. And here are a couple of our services, accounting assurance, tax advisory, advisory. Um, so many, many different types of services listed here. I won't go through all of them. And then just some of our strategic initiatives. So these are, you know, you guys can think of these as like the extracurriculars within a company. So our Women Can, which I had mentioned earlier, um, which is that co our collaborative um, advocacy network for women focuses on um, creating that mentorship community for women and men as well um, to really push them and advance within their career in public accounting. Um, our diversity and inclusion national council, that is a huge one, um, you know, focuses on, um, you know, not only diversity and inclusion awareness, but education events, um, you know, and also sessions and panels to give insight into all of the different backgrounds um, that make us as Cone Resnick. And then giving back with Cone Resnick Cares, um, you know, this is something that is very near and dear to my heart, where it focuses on the community outreach, giving back to the community, um, you know, as a national approach. Um, we have something that's called Pay It Forward, and that's once a year where employees receive $25 just to be able to donate that within um, the charity or organization of their choice. And I know $25, it doesn't sound like a lot at all, but if you think about it from an employee perspective and having over 3,000 employees, um, you know, that just it goes to show that that is something that is very important to us for our people to be able to give back to the community as well. Um, and then also on a local office, um, with local office like initiatives, the LA and Woodland Hills office is so huge on giving back to the community. So we there's many community service events, but also just like, um, you know, events within the office to raise money to give back to organizations as well. And then with the LA offices, um, it is combined. We do have our Los Angeles office and Woodland Hills office, two separate geographic locations, but we operate as one office. Um, and so we have about, I mean, over 170 employees um, and the breakdown about 43% um, assurance, 32% tax and 25% 25, 25 other, which includes like consulting, admin, recruiting, um, so that's just a breakdown. And in terms of industry specialization for LA, I would say we're huge on financial services, technology and entertainment, um, hospitality, real estate, um, cannabis is a huge one as well. Um, and yeah, those I would say are, are big um, industries that we focus on as well as um, non-for-profit and manufacturing and distribution as well. And so here are just a couple photos of, you know, the LA offices um, with some of the events that we've had in the past. As you guys can see, there's many like 
giving like many community service events, which was always my absolute favorite. Um, you know, there's just some of the some of the outings that we have um, within the office pre-COVID. Um, you know, team outings, wine and cheese tasting, our annual holiday party, cornhole tournaments, ice cream socials, happy hours after busy season parties. So there's a lot of, lot of things to get involved. Um, I know these are things that were pre-COVID, but even with COVID happening, um, you know, more than ever, we find it very important to stay in touch with our, um, you know, with our peers. And so, yeah, so here are just another couple photos of like things that we've done in the past as well. Um, partner breakfast where, you know, we have the partners serve us food, which it was always my favorite. Um, and then, you know, the holiday party in the past as well, which is always a great time. Um, yeah, and, and here are just a couple photos of like other things that we've done in the office as well. So as you guys can see, very close knit group. Um, very close knit group, very supportive group. So that pretty much concludes my presentation that I have for you guys. Um, so, you know, I just wanted, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you guys for, you know, being here and taking or and just like listening to my presentation. I hope, hopefully you guys were able to learn um, you know, learn a couple of things, but I wanted to see if you guys had any questions. Um, I know we're running close on time, but I just wanted to see if you guys had any questions before, um, you know, you guys leave for the day. Um, thanks for attending. And could you post your email in the chat, please? I don't, yes. I can't see it. Yes. Let me send it over. All right, I sent it over. Oh, one last thing I wanted to say um, for those of you guys. So we are having um, a Cone Resnick event today. Um, we are having um, what's called an Industry Insights, which is basically a series that we created um, to give an inside glimpse of all of the industries that we specialize in. It's an opportunity for you guys to network with the professionals, um, ask questions. It's really informative to understand like some of the, you know, some of the industries that we serve in. Um, so today specifically, it is, we are having a session on financial services and technology and entertainment. Um, so if that's something you guys are interested, in, I would highly recommend you guys attend. Today's um, panel is gonna be, um, all the professional or panelists will be from the LA and Woodland Hills office. Um, so I'm gonna send you guys the link in case you guys are interested to RSVP, um, but it is going to be on Handshake. Um, but I just wanted to make that little shout out in case you guys are interested in attending because it is our last session um, for this semester. So I sent over the link in case you guys are interested. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. I just wanted to see any more questions. Yes, uh, I have a question. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you. It sounds like you, uh, you've presented your form so well. It seems like you have a lot of fun there <laughs> doing yes. all these events. It's really nice to see. I have a question um, for our students who, let's say they have full-time work and they are not able to attend all these meetings, even though they are able to see that, but how would they stand out during the recruiting process? I know that the firms prefer to speak with students who attended different events, but if those students are not able to attend them, how would they connect with the recruiters and professionals? Yeah, so what I would say is I know that like sometimes if you guys have to work or you guys have school um, and just like other commitments that don't align with like your schedule, um, I would say that being in this virtual world, it is helpful in the fact that you guys can make opportunities for yourself at your own time with your own schedule. So, you know, let's say if you are unable to make it to an event um, that a firm is hosting, then I would say reaching out either to whoever is hosting that event, the recruiter, and letting them know like, hey, like, you know, I, 
was really interested in attending this event. However, I couldn't because of you know work commitments, but I would still love the opportunity to get to know more about the firm or you know to get to know more about whatever you know the event is on. Is there a way that we can either connect or would you be able to connect me with somebody? Um, so that way it's you have like you're stating your interest and nobody is going to fault you at all if you can't attend because you have work. That is not something that we look at. It's more so, you know, when you state your interest and you're being proactive and finding ways to, to still, um, you know, get the experience and, and get that knowledge, that's what's important. So just make sure that if you guys can't attend, but you're interested, it doesn't have to be like, oh, well, you know, now the firm is never going to notice me. No, just reach out to them and say, hey, this was my situation, but I'm still interested. Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions? No. Okay, well, that is all I had. And I know that you guys had last minute announcements as well before I go. But last thing, I just wanted to say thank you guys for being here today and, you know, just taking the time. I know you guys are all busy. So I appreciate you guys spending your hour with me. Um, and I hope to see you guys soon, um, whether that's, you know, on campus, through applications, through events, through emails, whatever. Um, I hope to see you guys soon and, and I appreciate you guys. So thank you guys so much. And I'll pass it over to you guys to make those last minute announcements. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Emily, for your presentation and for answering all of our questions. Uh, right now we are going to take a picture. So if everyone wants to turn their cameras on, we would really appreciate it. And while you are doing that, I'm gonna just make a couple of announcements. First of all, don't forget to fill out our apparel form. It was sent out in the newsletter. The due date for this one is Sunday, March 14th at midnight. And if you have missed any of our meetings and would like to watch them, and check it out on our YouTube page. You'll find them there along with all of the new podcasts. And uh, lastly, we would like to wish good luck to everyone who still have midterms and uh, enjoy your spring break and get a chance to recharge and <laughs> relax. <laughs>